Welcome to the Online Course Masters Show, where we learn from the best online course creators how to better create and sell our very own courses. Today I chat with Jimmy Narain, a world-traveling digital nomad who is a master at confidence and building your own brand. You're going to learn a ton of great tips to be more confident as an online teacher and building a better brand. All of that coming right up. Visit OnlineCourseMasters.com for show notes to watch the video version of this episode and see an archive of all our past guests. Please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. Please, if you haven't done so already, leave a review for this show wherever you listen to it. Now, let's get straight to the interview. All right, everyone, I'm here with Jimmy Narain. So excited for this interview. He's a best-selling instructor on Udemy. He's putting together some amazing premium courses, and he's an expert on brand. And so we're going to be talking about all of those things. But I know, Jimmy, you've been traveling a lot lately, doing a lot of speaking gigs, working on some of your premium courses. Talk about where you're at right now and what you've been up to. Awesome, man. First of all, I just want to say I feel really, really grateful to be here to talk to you. Uh, We spoke last time when I was in Barcelona very briefly, and uh, we have a mutual friend, Dragos, and we were wondering... How the hell is it possible that we didn't speak before? I've seen your stuff for many years now. You've seen my stuff. And I just want to say that I'm really grateful that finally we are having this opportunity to jump on a call to discuss different things. And I really admire what you are doing. When I look at you, man, I'm very inspired. 300,000 clients on Udemy. You have your YouTube channel that you're really pushing to the next level. You have your podcast right now. So you're really hustling and taking things to the next level. So I'm very grateful to be here. Thanks. Yeah, I'm excited to, you know, learn from you. I And like you said, we've both been on Udemy for a while and we've seen each other's names pop up for a few <laughs> years now. And this is like the second time we were actually talking. And last time, Jimmy is a hustler. And for people listening, I'll just tell a story about last time we were trying to figure out how to do this interview and he was in <laughs> Barcelona and he's like, running around the city trying to find where he can get wi-fi and he just like pops into this nice hotel and hustles the guy to let him in on like their five-star club to get the wi-fi well it didn't work out but uh i'm glad to have you here today and the spanish wi-fi is a bit challenging right (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah where are you right now actually so at the moment i'm in bucharest i just got here like a week ago and uh Finally, after a long time, I feel like I have home because I'm going to be here for almost three weeks in one place, which is a long time for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I have my fridge. I have, you know, I can actually do groceries and I feel like I'm in one place, which is amazing. It's a great change. Uh, but I just got here. I was traveling around Balkans and before I was in Barcelona, as you said, doing a couple of speaking gigs, speaking at Mind Valley U and a couple of other places. And I actually did my first presentation in Spanish, entirely in Spanish. And uh, I learned Spanish on the street, so I never formally learned it. So it was a, a big comfort zone push, you know. Public speaking is a part of my comfort zone now, but that situation was right before we talked in Barcelona. My hands were shaking a little bit before the speech because I knew that my Spanish wasn't good enough, but I still went there and I and I did it. And uh, But yeah, I'm in Bucharest right now for the next... I think for one more week, week and a half, and then I'm going back to Poland to see my family. Nice. Well, you're definitely sort of that digital nomad. You have your own business, and a lot of people listening might be inspired and interested in doing that. First off, why is teaching an online course kind of the perfect thing for someone who wants that digital nomad lifestyle that you're doing right now? Oh man, that's a, that's a really good question. And there are so many answers, so many answers. I mean, I see benefits everywhere because the reality is that when you really think about it, in today's world, we are blessed. I mean, back in the day, if someone told you that you could be traveling the world and helping people and spreading your message and connecting with like-minded people all over the world, I mean, people, people felt like it was impossible and it really was impossible back in the day. But nowadays, pretty much anyone can use their laptops to make money and to contribute to the world. So for me, some of the biggest benefits of teaching online is having that feeling of contribution. Now, obviously, everyone wants to make money, and it's amazing to make passive income. That's definitely one of the biggest benefits. But there is nothing that can feel better than you know that, that moment when you get your first uh, positive review from someone. 
or you get a letter from someone telling you how you impacted their lives. And then you check, you know, which country they come from and you realize that they are from Bangladesh or they are from, you know, uh, Armenia or Sudan or place like that. And you are thinking, oh my God, this is like so many thousands of kilometers away. And I had a chance to impact that person. And then that person may impact other people and you eventually trigger that snowball effect, that ripple effect where, you know, by impacting just one individual, you can actually impact thousands and thousands of them. So for me, this is the biggest benefit, really. I mean, money is great. It's amazing to make money, to make passive income, to have the flexibility. But having that feeling that you can do what you love to do, that you can share your passion, your knowledge, your experiences with the world and, and contribute contribute so you know that you're building something that's an amazing feeling i love it and i think that's good advice just to focus on that more than the the money side of things especially yeah. when you're getting started out because if you're focused on helping people in the end if you stick with it i believe you'll be paid back and you'll figure out a way to make money from that sort of helping so take us back to the start how did how did you even get started with teaching your own online courses Oh, wow. So uh, the story is not very pretty. <laughs> so, so most people, that's the funny thing, right? When I meet people while I'm traveling, they always assume that I was always a confident person, that I always had my, my things together. But the reality is that, and by the way, maybe I should send you some pictures so you can share with your audience how I looked like when I was like 16, 17. But I was a very introverted kid, right? I still remember those situations when... I was 16, 17 years old. I, I was a geek. I was always into science and learning, but I wasn't very good with building connections with people. And I had no confidence, absolutely no confidence. And I still remember the times when I really tried to make ends meet. I had no money, no connections. My teachers used to tell me that I wouldn't accomplish anything in my life, which is a when you really think about it, it's a bit, big bummer when your teachers tell you that. And I had all of those limiting beliefs in my mind. And, you know, I had situations when I would see uh, someone on the street I wanted to talk to, or I had an opportunity to go on a stage and deliver some type of short speech. But that fear would be so overwhelming. You know, I would feel my heart racing and palms sweating, and then my mouth is getting dry, and I can't think straight, and I feel like I'm going to pass out. And then what would happen was I would retreat back to my comfort zone, and then I would feel good for a few minutes. But then what happens after is even worse because you start realizing that once again, you screwed up. Once again, you were a failure. You didn't push yourself. You didn't embrace your fears. And you feel like a loser. And then your confidence keeps dropping and dropping and dropping. So that was my reality back in the day. And when you combine that you know, limiting mindset, limited mindset with all of those limiting beliefs imposed on me by, by the society, by my teachers and, and people around me, um, I really didn't believe that I could accomplish my dreams. And I had big dreams, but they were kind of, I used to daydream, but I never really believed that those things were possible for me. But at one point I discovered Tony Robbins and a couple of other authors. I started reading and I realized that if there are other people who used to be broke, if there are other people who used to be socially anxious and had no confidence and maybe had some diseases, but they managed to build themselves up and, and make something out of their lives, I realized, you know what, why the hell can't I do it with my own life? So that was the trigger when I realized that it's not just about the circumstances, but it's about, you know, what I do about my circumstances and what actions I take on a daily basis to, to, to do something about my life. So that's when I started my journey with personal development. And, you know, when I started reading and learning and pushing my comfort zone, that's when I started crushing those limiting beliefs one after one. And you know how it is, man. When you destroy your limiting belief and, you know, you achieve something that you thought was impossible, you get more confidence, right? right. So then you put even more energy and effort into doing that another big thing that seemed impossible in the past and then the next thing you know you have that positive momentum and and you feel unstoppable so that's kind of this positive spiral i managed to to create in my life but then you know i went to to the uk to study at the university there uh, that was my dream always but once again i tried to make ends meet i was a poor student had no money i was eating beans day after day and you know back at uni maybe you can relate to that but back at uni everyone used to tell me that the biggest goal, the biggest dream, uh, 
uh, the biggest accomplishment is to work for a massive corporation. Ideally, you should work for Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley or go to one of those places, and that's when you're going to be successful. So obviously, I got brainwashed by that mindset, and that's what I wanted to accomplish. And then fast forward a few years later, I ended up working for some of those companies, for example, Goldman Sachs. And it was fun for the first week, but then after, you realize that that's not what I want to do in my life. I, I want to contribute to the world. I don't just want to make a bunch of money and spend 15, 16 hours a day doing something I don't love to do just for the sake of buying a fancy car or getting a better apartment. And that's when I started redefining you know, my purpose in life, what I really want to do. And then you know, later on, I uh, quit my final job, decided to build something online. I always loved education. I always loved teaching. So I started building online courses and Man, it was really tough right from the get-go, made so many mistakes, so many mistakes. For example, not building a list, one of the major mistakes ever. But eventually, after being broke and, and trying to build myself up, I, I, I eventually managed to build a business that's working pretty well right now. Awesome. Well, I want to dive into that and what's how you've gotten it to work for yourself. But just about this idea of taking steps to conquer your fears, really, Let's make it a little more practical for people who are listening. I know mm -hmm. a lot of people are afraid just to even get in front of the camera and they don't have a lot of confidence on camera trying to teach an online course. So what are some of those first steps that you would tell someone or what can people start to do to have a little bit more confidence on camera mm -hmm. and as an online teacher? Sure. So it's quite interesting what you said just now because I personally know people who are very successful they present on stages, they, they've written books, but they are still afraid to present on the camera, right? So when you think about it, if a successful person is afraid to present on a video, then what can possibly be happening in normal people's minds? And, you know, um, I can relate to that fear because back in the day when I started making my first videos, I was using a $100 camera that I couldn't even afford. It was a gift from my ex-girlfriend, you know? And by, if you're watching this, thank you so much for that because it changed my life. <laughs> but literally, I was filming my videos with $100 camera. And I'll, I'll never forget when I made my first video and I posted it on YouTube. And man, I was refreshing that video every minute or so, just hoping that people not bash me, hoping that I'm not going to get too much hate. And it was scary as hell. It was so I couldn't sleep at night. I would wake up in the middle of the night. You can relate to that, right? Oh, yeah. You can probably, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally wake up in the middle of the night, refreshing the video, hoping that it's going to be fine. But what I realized is that people appreciate uh, authenticity, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's one thing I want to say to people who are getting started. We have that misconception that we always have to be on our A game. We always have to be the best. We always have to show our best side. But the reality is that when you, when you show your best side, people can't relate to you because everyone struggles with some type of shit in their lives. Everyone. Right now, every single person, you may have all the money in the world, you may have all the success. I bet that there is some area of your life you are struggling with, whether it's your relationships or a or, or, or money situation or perhaps you have everything you need but you can't find your true passion, whatever it is. Everyone struggles with something and that's why people appreciate authenticity. People really appreciate people who are willing to just put themselves out there. So one of the most important things to realize is that when you shoot your first video and you put it out there, people will not be judging you. People are not watching your videos to judge you, to you know, take a piece of paper and jot down notes. I don't like this. I don't like that about that person. People don't do it. People are watching your videos because they want to get value. And that's it. They want to get value. So as long as you provide value in an authentic way, you will benefit people. And hey, guess what? If you make a mistake, if you say something stupid or maybe you lose your composure and you stutter for a little bit, maybe it's even better because that person watching your video will look at you thinking, oh, wow, Phil is just a person. I thought that Phil is this, you know, the big guy, the big instructor, but he is just a person. I relate to that guy now. Oh, my God, I want to watch him. I want to buy his stuff. I want to follow his journey. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you can relate to that, right? Because yeah. you come across as very authentic, man. Oh, Even the way you. we started this interview, we started talking and you said to me, you know what, man, let's just keep rolling. I'm just going to I'm just gonna turn on the video. Let's see what happens. And I'm like, sure, why not? Let's do it. No preparation, um, no structure. We just go with the flow. People appreciate that. Yeah, totally. And I mean, I still have, you know, I have this two different voices when I am on camera. I try to speak more clearly, but like you said, I'll make mistakes in my courses or in my videos on YouTube, or I've been doing a lot of live video lately. So that's, you know, when you're live, you can't do anything other than just keep going (laughs) and rolling with it. And it actually reminds me of a buddy who was doing broadcast journalism. He was working for a big news station in San Francisco. And the people who were kind of helping train him were, were, would tell him like, if you make a mistake on camera, it's okay. Or if you like lose your track and you're trying to figure out what to say, just take a moment, take a breath. It's okay to feel like you don't have to be like just talking constantly and mm-hmm. act like you know everything. If you make a mistake, that's totally fine. So I think that's good advice, especially just to be yourself and people are going to connect with you a little bit better that way. So Exactly. And one thing, I want to add one thing because that's I think that's very important. I totally agree with what you said. I totally agree. And you see, one of the biggest problems people have is when they present, whether it's on a video or on a stage, or maybe they talk to a bunch of people they don't know, people get stressed out and they lose their composure because they pay too much attention to themselves. Mm. So for example, right now I'm talking to you and there is that voice. I still have that voice at the back of my head telling me, hmm, you know what? This podcast can be potentially seen by maybe a million people in the future in the next few years down the line, maybe even more than that. Oh, wow. Are you saying the right things? Are you using the right body language? You have this uh, random setup, you know, in your rented studio that may break any time. I'm using two, as I told you before, I'm using two wooden stools to keep my laptop and the microphone together. So I'm thinking, oh, wow, you know, am I doing the, the, the good job? But I try to, I try to suppress that voice and go with the flow because the reality is that, as I said, you know, what you feel in your body uh, is not necessarily reflected in how people perceive you. So very often on the stage, when you present, you feel certain sensations, right? You feel your heart beating faster or your palms sweating, or maybe your mouth is dry, or perhaps you feel like you are having some nervous tics. Maybe your body language is not, not up to speed, but nobody can see it. People don't pay attention. So one of the most important tips I think is to forget about yourself and when you shoot any type of video or you do any type of podcast or maybe give a presentation, just try to shift that focus away from yourself and try to provide value to people and be the messenger, just be the messenger. And then everything becomes easier. You know, Mm, I really love that. And you know, with online courses specifically at the end of the day, people are just wanting that value and they'll, They'll forgive you for mistakes. They'll forgive you for the lack of quality. We would all love to have amazing quality video with the best camera and the best microphone and the best graphics and everything. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, people will forgive you for a lack in quality in those areas. But if you're giving value and you're they're getting a benefit from your class, that's when they're gonna, going to leave you a good review. That's when they're going to buy another class of yours. So exactly. getting back to the first classes, what was your first online class about? And mm-hmm. kind of walk me through that experience. Where, did you make any sales initially? Was it easy? Was it hard? What, how did you make your first sales? <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's a really interesting question, you know, because it's fun to think about it. It's, it's fun to go back in time and just re- re- relive those emotions. Uh, so my first course was called Double Your Confidence and self-esteem. And the funny thing is that it was my first course, obviously I didn't have too much experience, but it's still a bestseller. So that course sells the best. And I think one of the reasons is that um, I didn't pay so much attention to having amazing production quality and doing all the right things, but I was just being authentic. I, I did everything I could with what I had. But I remember when I was building that course, it took me a long time. I was writing content for a few months I initially wanted to publish it as a book. So I wrote content and then I figured, hmm, how many people can I possibly reach with a book? I'm not known, nobody knows my name. 
maybe my book will not sell. At least when I create a video, I can put myself out there and really connect with the audience at a deeper level. So I posted it on Udemy um, on the new year, actually. It was literally few a few hours um, of the final day of, of December. I think it was four years ago. And I remember when I clicked the submit button, I was extremely stressed. I was excited, but I was stressed at the same time. You know, we are celebrating the New Year's Eve and I had those big expectations because I had friends who were building online courses and I thought, oh wow, now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna make a lot of money. I'll be able to travel full time. It's gonna be amazing. But then I had that voice at the back of my head telling me, hey man, what if you sell only one copy? And you're gonna get a bad review from that one copy, you know. So I had that, that weird voice, and and I was really stressed out. But when I clicked submit button, suddenly I started getting sales. I was quite lucky because I published my course during like one of the biggest sales that Udemy was running. And with the first few days, I got I think maybe fifty to hundred sales. Wow! And for me, that was mind blowing, totally mind blowing. So it was probably one of the best days of my entire life. People say that the moment you make your first dollar online, everything changes, and I can totally agree with that. I'm sure you can relate to that, right? Yeah, it's you life changing. First... You, you know, it's like the first, not only the first money that I made online, but the first money that I really made through my own creation. Mm. And after that, it was like, okay, how can I keep doing this? <laughs> <laughs> how can I multiply by a thousand, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But that's, that's what's happening, right? You make that first dollar and then you say to yourself, well, if I made one dollar online and clearly there are infinite possibilities, you know, it's so easy to scale everything online. Why can't I make thousand times more, 10,000 times more? So I had those thoughts, but then a weird thing happened. Sales slowed down and then for a few days I didn't get any sales. And that voice started becoming louder and louder and louder. And I started questioning what the hell I'm doing. So I remember the first month on Udemy, I made thousand bucks, which seems like a lot of money for the first month. The second month, I made two hundred ninety-three dollars. Mm -hmm. I never forget those numbers because there are so many emotions associated to those numbers. Like now, I don't. If you ask me how much I made two months ago, I don't even remember. I don't even know. But back in the day, I still remember those numbers because from one thousand to two ninety-three. That was a big hit. I, I, I literally felt like I got slapped in the face. And bear in mind, at that point, I didn't have too many savings. I had no job. I quit my last job. So I was literally betting everything on online education. And then the next month, I made $636. And I'm thinking, oh my God, okay, it's going up, but it's so slow. The next month, $922. And then the next month, $980. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to get stuck at 1000 mark. I can't live with, with this amount of money. And then at one point, I almost gave up. I got a bunch of job offers and even my parents, I talked to them and they said, you know what, you could work in so many different corporations. Why don't you go back? Why don't you just do this online thing on the side, see what happens and just go back to normal employment, make decent money, you know, have all those benefits that you can get. And I almost did it. I got to tell you, I, I almost gave up. But then I realized that if I give up right now, I'm going to I'm going to always regret not pushing it, not not embracing the unknown. Like it's a cliche, right? But it really makes sense. People don't regret things they've done. People regret things that they haven't tried. Mm -hmm. So I said to myself, you know what? I'm just going to go full out. Let's see what happens. Worst case, I'm going to be broke and then I'm going to find a job. Not a big deal. So I kept pushing and a few months later, $3,000 came in and then 8 and then 10 and then my life changed forever. So it's been an interesting journey, but I gotta tell you, at the beginning, I had many times when I felt like giving up. I had imposter syndrome at one point. You've probably had, had this as well, right? Mm -hmm. When you feel like, why am I doing this? Am I, really, am I really so good on the camera? Do I really provide so much value? Well, people give me great reviews, but maybe it's all, maybe it's not real. Maybe it's in my head. <laughs> that, you know, even today, I think that's something I still struggle with a little bit myself. And I see your profile. You've got over 75,000 students. And like you said, you, you're getting the good reviews. I get good reviews mostly. But there's still days where I'm like, are, are my courses really helping people? Are people like really benefiting <laughs> from them? And of course, I'm getting the monetary value of 
people saying, yes, your courses help. This is what I'm doing full time. Right. But dude, that's it. That we have, I haven't talked about that on this podcast at all, actually, but I think it's an important thing for people mm-hmm. to, to hear that you and I both have gone through that and it's normal, especially once you start getting, um, you know, you, maybe you're doing this full time or you're thinking about doing this full time, but then you have these hesitations. So mm-hmm. yeah, man, I, I still think, so think about that. It's really important, and, and also to add to that, I personally know people, I, obviously I can't mention the names, but I know people in business who are quite famous, they are, let's say, business celebrities, and when I talk to them, many of them admitted that till this day, they have moments when they get on a stage to speak in front of a thousand people, and they get paid a ton of money, like a ton of money to do it, and they still have self-doubts, and they still sometimes feel like they are not meant to be there. And to be honest, when I heard some of those statements, they, they were very empowering because I realized that it doesn't matter at what level you are, you will always experience a little bit of that, you know? So for example, in my course, I talk about confidence, right? And many people have a misconception about confidence. Many people believe that being confident is about always being bulletproof. Nothing can phase you out. You have no emotions. You never show any emotions, you never cry, you never make mistakes, you're always this tough person. But that's not being confident, that's usually overcompensating insecurities. So real confidence is feeling comfortable in your own skin, uh, both with your strengths and your weaknesses, and admitting that sometimes you may not feel at your best. So when I meet those people who are at a very high level, you know, they are, I would call them the black belts of business, and they admit that they still have those insecurities and self-doubts creep in from time to time. That's when, you know, I realized that, hey, we are in this game together. You got to do your best and it's totally normal that you will face those, those limiting beliefs. So when you are getting started, because, you know, your audience, I bet that many people listening to this right now, they are thinking about starting uh, something online, whether it's building a course or maybe starting an e-commerce store, whatever it is, you will have those uh, limiting beliefs. You will. And uh, it's always nice to think positive and, and, and assume that everything will work out well. But I believe it's also very important to acknowledge that shit will happen and you will fail a bunch of times and, you know, and uh, bad things will happen. So it's important to know it in advance, prepare yourself for it mentally and acknowledge that everyone faces those difficulties. Yep, exactly. You talked about taking your income from a thousand dollars a month, which maybe some people could live on in some mm-hmm. parts of the world, but most people probably couldn't. And then growing your income, three thousand, ten thousand. What what steps did you actually take to to improve that income, and what? Mm-hmm what today do you think would work for people who might be making around a thousand dollars, but really want to take it to the next level? Hey, Phil here. Are you enjoying this episode? I really hope you are. And I hope you're learning to become a better online course creator. If you want to fast track your success, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com and get your free trial of the full flagship program, the masterclass for online course creators. Get more information at onlinecoursemasters.com. Mm-hmm. Sure. So one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they publish a course online. They have big expectations. And then when it's not working as they expected, they just leave it the way it is. Maybe they add a bunch of videos, but they get discouraged and they don't produce more content. But I honestly believe it's extremely important to, first of all, always improve your courses, always improve your courses. So I never believe in this notion of publishing a product and, hey, this is my finished product, that's it, I'm going to forget about it. It's so important to update your products all the time. I know that you're doing it yourself, that's why you're so successful, because you keep updating your products. You don't just simply publish a course and then say to yourself, hey, awesome, I made a bunch of money, I'm going to leave it like this, let's see what happens in five years from now. No, you go back there, you publish bonus lectures, you give people value on YouTube, you send educational announcements, you're doing your best. And I believe that this is so important. But what people don't realize is that you will not necessarily see direct results right after doing it. So when you post those bonus videos, when you update your course, 
you may not see results straight away. You have to wait for those results. They come with delay. That's why it's so important just to keep pushing and keep updating your content. Another thing is building new courses. I mean, for example, when it comes to Udemy, when you have one course, that's great. But when you have five courses and then you build a new one, then first of all, you already have an audience, right? So you can send a questionnaire to your audience and you can ask them, hey guys, I want to make sure that I create something that's perfect for your needs. What would you like to learn? What is the internal dialogue you have on a daily basis? What limiting beliefs do you have? What questions are you thinking about on a daily basis? Ask them. They will tell you and you know exactly what you have to deliver. So then you create a course based on the needs of your audience. So you really customize it to your specific audience. And then what's going to happen is you can take that course and you can promote it to your existing list, to your mailing list, to your Udemy client base, whatever it is. And the beautiful thing is that you end up making a lot of sales right from the get-go, like literally within the first day of posting the course, you can make a lot of money, but also you make a lot of money because you provided value that people actually needed. So one of the best advice, in my opinion, keep updating your courses and keep posting new courses based on the needs of your audience. Love it. Yeah. Especially that last part about just listening to your audience, asking them and seeing what they actually want. That was yeah. one mistake I made early on was just making courses on whatever I thought was interesting. And then my audience was segmented and all my mm. courses, my audience didn't necessarily want those next courses. So now I do a lot more validation of my courses to make sure it's a good topic. And you don't necessarily need to do that when you're starting out, but um, just asking your audience, whatever audience you have is a good idea. What yeah. are what are you doing to grow your audience outside of Udemy? Because I know that's so important for people who want mm -hmm. long-term success. Sure, sure. So uh, I'm big on you. I mean, I don't mean I'm big on YouTube, but... <laughs> you like weird. YouTube a lot. <laughs> I, I, I'm, yeah, that's what I meant. Because <laughs> I'm not so big on YouTube, but I... I'm big on the idea that YouTube is powerful, <laughs> just to make it clear. So <laughs> I really believe in social media, whether you like it or not. Uh, to be honest, personally, I don't like to spend too much time online. I prefer to have adventures, be in nature, meet with people face to face. But at the same time, I appreciate the value of social media. So I always make sure that I push my YouTube to the next level. And, you know, I really believe in posting content for free. Now, there's this big misconception in the online community that you have to charge for your best knowledge, right? Like if, if you have something really valuable to offer, you have to charge a lot of money for it. But the reality is that, you know, you should give away as much as possible for free. And when you do it, people will connect with you at such a level that when you actually sell a product, they'll be very, very likely to buy it. And they'll buy it with a huge smile on their faces because they know that you already, you've already given them so much value. So I believe that you should utilize social media, put a ton of content on YouTube, but don't just put it out there and just wait for a miracle to happen. You know, upload it on YouTube, put the right tags there, optimize your title, learn about YouTube marketing, share your videos, you know, on Facebook and other platforms, create an Instagram account, whatever your niche is. Let's say that your niche is, uh, travel hacking. Well, post some pictures from different cool destinations, do competitions, ask people to contribute their own photos, maybe create a Facebook group about traveling, do something that's really valuable and try to build a community. And that's, by the way, that's a mistake I've made uh, initially. That was one of the biggest mistakes that I made when I got started. I didn't try to build a community. So I tried to create as much content as possible but I wasn't really thinking about connecting people together. And uh, I realized recently that one of the best things you can do when building content online is to create a community of people that will essentially help you to grow your audience organically. I mean, there's nothing better than having, for example, a Facebook group where you have other people from your audience contributing. And then eventually at some point, you're kind of out of the equation, you don't even have to be online, but things are going on, things are building up because you have that that core community. Yeah, so Facebook group, I think that's a great idea. Is Are there any other ways that you think people should create a community or is the Facebook group kind of the thing to do right now? Mm -hmm. uh, 
to be totally honest with you, I wouldn't call myself an expert in building communities. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to pretend that I, I'm an expert and I know everything about it. I'm still fresh and new when it comes to building communities. I'm trying to build one right now. It's going really well, but, but I wouldn't call myself an ultimate expert in that. So, uh, yeah. So I'm sure I'm gonna have more information for you uh, in a couple of months from now. <laughs> well, I mean, you see, I don't, like, I don't like those people. Like, sometimes you have an interview and people try to answer every single question. I mean, no, you I, know, there's no. <laughs> and I love it because I, I've been doing this for five years now, and I still don't know the the answer that to that question. And ultimately, I don't think there's ever one answer. There's, it's not like Facebook groups are the only thing that allow you to do that. Um, but I think just the so idea. Take on that. Well, I started a Facebook group for the online course masters group and the podcast and people listening. A lot of people are on that, but I haven't started one for my actual other brand for which is most of my courses related to photography, video production. So I don't have like a community around that topic. And that's something that I need to work on right now because I think it is so important. Um, and I've been thinking about, uh, a Facebook group for that. But this, it kind of brings me to my next question, which will help me about branding because it's something mm -hmm. that I've struggled with. How do I brand my business and my courses when I teach so many different topics and when I am in all these different places, what advice do you have for mm -hmm. building a, an actual brand? Sure. Uh, that's a, that's a really good question. It's not an easy question mm -hmm. to be honest with you, but it's a very important question. When it comes to branding, I honestly believe that the most important thing is to be authentic. And uh, if you're not sure how you want to brand yourself, I believe that you should focus on branding yourself as you. Uh, so for example, I talk to many people who want to start online courses and they are telling me, hey, Jimmy, listen, so I want to build this course about this and about that. I'm thinking, should I have this logo or that logo? Should I should I use this name or that name? How should I approach it? And then what's gonna, what, what usually happens is they experience the paralysis of analysis and they keep analyzing and overthinking and like six months later, they have the same questions. And when I ask them, hey, what have you done so far? Oh, well, you know, um, I've done a lot of research. You know, I read those uh, 20 books. I'm like, no, but what have you done? Uh, well, you know, <laughs> and they haven't done anything. So what I believe in when you are not totally sure how you want to brand yourself, start with branding yourself by who you are. So for me, it's always about being authentic and walking your talk. You got to walk your talk, right? So, for example, I see people. Uh, I don't want to name the names, of course, but I see people who are talking, they're making courses and YouTube videos about making money while traveling and, and having an amazing lifestyle. So my question is, why are you making all those videos from a basement? You know, like, so if you're traveling so much and you want to teach people how to make money while traveling, why don't you shoot some videos while you're actually traveling? Because otherwise people may start thinking, well, is this person for real or maybe they are trying to build that lifestyle lifestyle by teaching people how to have that lifestyle you know what i mean so it's all about being congruent and being authentic and i think a lot of a lot of great things come from that and also embracing vulnerability so back in the day you know when i quit my first courses i had a problem with that i got i got to be very honest with you i had a problem with vulnerability i found it very difficult to share some of my weaknesses and to share some of my struggles. And the way I talked to you, you know, about, about me being broke back in the day and not having confidence, a few years ago, I wasn't able to talk about those things openly. I just didn't have enough courage to talk about it. But I realized at some point that when you embrace vulnerability and when you share with people your weaknesses, your failures, and, and when you're very, very real with them, People appreciate it and they connect with you more. And this is the embodiment of building a brand. People look at your stuff and after one hour of watching your videos, they feel like they know you. They feel like you are just a person. You're not trying to prove something or, 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 to, or to portray yourself as someone uh, you know, that you want to be, but maybe you're not that person yet, but you are being authentic. And actually some funny things happened recently. When I was in Barcelona, I gave those speeches a bunch of people got shocked because, uh, you know, when I was doing a speech about about presenting and building content online, I shared a story with people 
how I almost bombed on a stage, you know? So I had this one situation back in the day when I was supposed to deliver a presentation uh, in front of 100 people. And like two minutes before my turn, I felt so uncomfortable. I, I started panicking and I literally run away from the room. So I excused myself. I said to my friend, sorry, guys, I have a stomach problem. I have to go to the toilet, which of course wasn't the case. I went to the toilet, my heart beating really fast. And I just felt like, you know, I can't go back there. I don't have enough courage. I can't do it. I'm going to pass out on a stage. I was really, really afraid. And then eventually I realized that if I don't go back, eventually, you know, like I'll have more of those situations in the future. I can't keep running away. So I, I went back to the room. I delivered the presentation, sweating profusely, you know, stuttering and but after a few minutes, I got more and more comfortable, and then eventually I made it happen. But I shared that story on a stage in Barcelona, and people were shocked. People were shocked because, as I said at the beginning, they assumed that I was always a confident guy. But then I asked them a question, 100 plus people in the room. I walked around, and I asked them a question. I said, okay, guys, tell me, what do you think about me after I shared this story with you? What do you think about me? And be very honest with me. I can't take it. Be very honest with me. Do you feel like I'm a weak person? And they're like, no, of course not. Do you, f do, do you feel like I'm a, I'm a loser? I'm a failure? I'm a little baby? And people were like, no, no. And then people started speaking up and some of them stood up and they're like, no, man, this is courage. You're courageous. And I'm like, okay, so why is that? And they say, well, because you are not afraid to share some of those those weaknesses you've had and some of those failures you have so that's how you bond with people and that's how you create a, a real brand because the way i see when you just give value to people it's fine that's that's already great but if you give value to people and you also manage to connect with them at a different level so they look at you they don't feel like you are better than them but they can really see themselves in you that's when you trigger a situation when they won't forget you. When they see your face five years from now, they will remember you. And that's real branding. You want to be memorable. You don't want to be one of those people where, you know, people see your video and then they see you again after a week and they don't remember your face. You want to make sure that they remember you for the right reasons. Mm, love it. So it's much more about your personality, vulnerability, than picking yeah. a logo, picking colors, having like specific graphics and things like that, which I totally agree exactly. with. I think people will probably ask the question, you know, you're teaching about confidence and if you're teaching sort of lifestyle courses that that can easily come across. But what if, what if I'm teaching a programming course or what if I'm teaching a, a mm -hmm. Photoshop course, how do I build that brand and show that vulnerability in more of that type of, not mm -hmm. that technical type of course? Hmm, very good question. It's a good very question. Good question. <laughs> I, I'm putting you on the spot. But Tricky I, question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome, man. I, I love it, you know? I mean, <laughs> got to walk my talk, right? You put me on the spot right now. Yeah. I got I to gotta handle it. <laughs> but look, if you're teaching a technical course, I honestly believe you can still embrace vulnerability and you can still embrace that authenticity. So, for example, if you have, uh, you know, you have uh, a certain way of, of, of uh, saying things, maybe, maybe, uh, by nature, you know, you like to make jokes and, and this is who you are. You, you are not very serious. Don't try to be serious for the sake of looking like a big business person online. Just embrace who you are. When you make those videos and you teach people about programming, make some jokes. Don't think about people who may not like it. Think about people who will like it because it's all about polarizing. It's all about polarizing your audience. You can't please everyone. And when you want to please everyone, you end up not pleasing anyone. And people are kind of like, yeah, it's all right. I kind of like those videos, but I'm not very impressed. And you end up not building a, a big, you know, core audience. But when you polarize and when you're being yourself and showing your true personality, that's when some people watch your videos and they'll think, you know what, I can't resonate with this person. I just can't. There is something about that person I don't like. That's perfect. Because if they can't relate to you, it probably means that there are other people who will totally relate with you and they'll become your core fans. And like one of the ways of doing it is to showcasing some of your personal life. Now, I know that some people don't like to be very public about their lives, but, but I honestly believe that there is a lot of value in that. You don't need to go overboard. You don't have to install 20 cameras in your house, you know, so people can see how you eat your breakfast. 
with your spouse, but you can show a little bit. You know, you can give them a glimpse of your life. For example, let's say that you are doing a pro- pro- programming course, right? Some technical course. Instead of shooting all the videos in PowerPoint and doing a voiceover, why don't you create intros to every single section where you actually put yourself out there in front of the camera? And then again, some people might be thinking now, yeah, but you know, I'm not good on the camera. I'm not made to present. I, people will not like me. That's the thing. Forget about what you think people will like or they will not like. Just put yourself out there on yourself. You know, it, it's you. I mean, it's you. Just come on. You got to love yourself. So on yourself, put yourself in front of the camera and ideally film a video, maybe in a place that's kind of related to who you are. So for example, if you are if you are an animal lover and you have a bunch of golden retrievers at home, sit down in your uh, in your garden with your dogs next to you and say, hey guys, welcome, my name is James, whatever. I welcome you to this course about programming. In this course, I'm gonna teach you this and that. By the way, in case you're wondering, this is my dog, whatever. And when people watch a video like that, even though the you know most of the content is done as a PowerPoint presentation, they know that a real human being is teaching them. And I can guarantee you that they won't forget you and they'll want to get your other courses. Yeah, and that's what people have to do now to separate themselves because everyone is teaching a programming course sitting in front of a blank white wall without personality. So I love all of that. And I think back to when I started learning some of the programs that I've learned like After Effects and I remember those tutorials on YouTube the the people I liked and followed were were the ones making jokes at the start of the videos and <laughs> keeping it a little bit entertaining so I think you you nailed that question so thanks for all that advice <laughs> so I know we've been going for a little while but I hope I can ans- ask you a couple more questions uh, be- oh, because I know you're working on a new um, program sort of more of a premium course and you might be sort of at the start of this uh, adventures, but walk us through kind of what the process has been and what you're doing to take it from doing Udemy courses to a more premium program. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. So so look, so far I've been focusing on building courses uh, that I can spread to thousands and thousands of people, right? So courses that don't require a huge financial investment, but thanks to that, I can reach tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of people. And I like that feeling of contribution. At the same time, I realized that there are many people who are willing to take another step and go a bit further than that and learn the premium content. Now, when I say premium content, I don't mean that it's better than my Udemy courses because it's pretty much the same content. The difference is that I started packaging my content in a different way that many people will find more compelling. So for example, instead of simply watching my videos on Udemy, they'll be able to jump on live calls with me, on live webinars, ask questions, have a WhatsApp support group where they can send send me audio messages and ask me questions on the go. Hey, what's up? I'm about to give a presentation tomorrow. Do you have any advice for me? Boom, and I'm gonna ask her that question. Even if I'm climbing Himalayas, I can always pull out my phone and send a quick audio message. Different people, different needs, right? And the reason why I'm building higher level products now is because on my journey with Udemy and YouTube and other platforms, I realized that you know most people are not willing to spend a lot of money on courses, right? But there are people who have a lot of money and they are willing to spend money on getting great value. So as long as you provide them with great value, they are more than willing to spend money. You know, I'm one of those people. If, if someone can offer me a tremendous value, let's say I want to learn a new skill, I want to learn, for example, photography. I really don't believe in reinventing the wheel. There is no point of reinventing the wheel. Your life is so short, right? It's ending literally one minute at a time. You gotta make the most of it. So instead of me trying to learn for one year myself, trial and error, I'd rather pay someone who really knows their stuff, $2,000, $3,000, why not? But if I know that that money will buy me having maybe a live call with that person every two weeks for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, plus having a bunch of webinars and some premium content, I'm happy to do it because I know that it's going to save me so many hours of my time mm-hmm. that, you know, if I use those hours to build my own products, I'm going to end up making so much more money. So, so there are lots of people like that. And that's, that's uh, the reason why I started building 
a higher level products right now. Love it. And I think that value is perfect for a premium course. What are you doing to uh, sell that? Like what are your funnels? Uh, what kind of content are you creating? How are you potentially even getting someone from Udemy to mm -hmm. ultimately get on your list and buy one of those products? Yeah. So, so the way I see it, uh, first of all, I want to say something. I, uh, I hate hard sales. I, I literally, I hate, you know, as long as you get those, you get those ads and, and you click on them and there's a landing page and they tell you, Hey, we have only five spots left for the next two hours. You will pay $5,000 instead of $27,597 pounds. I mean, come on. I hate that. So what I like to do, you know, with my brand is I like to give a huge range of options for anyone, right? So, so the way I do it, when people don't have money, they can watch my free Udemy course, uh, sorry, my free YouTube videos, and they can get my free ebooks. When they have a bit of money to spare, they can buy my uh, Udemy courses. If they have more money, they can buy my basic course uh, outside of Udemy. And if they have a lot of money and they want to get even more value, they can get the premium package. So the way I'm going to promote it, and I'm already doing it, is using Facebook ads. Now, our mutual friend Dragos is a master in that. So, you know, I honestly believe in specializing and, and, and focusing on, on what you are good at. So instead of me just sitting down and running ads, I basically partnered with Dragos and a few other people, and they are handling marketing for me. So I have certain budget that I give to them, and they are managing my ads. It's been going very well so far. Basically, the way it works is you provide as much value as possible for free initially to generate free leads, right? So you, you get people on your mailing list, then you offer them even more and more and more value, and then eventually you tell them, hey, listen, if you enjoyed uh, my, my, uh, my info so far, there's this opportunity you can enroll in this product. I don't believe, as I said, in those, those weird tactics, you have only two hours to buy it, otherwise you lose your opportunity forever. No, I basically give them an option. You can buy it or not. If you don't buy it, cool. You, know, you can still watch my free videos, or you can buy one of my Udemy courses. And if you don't want to buy anything, cool, no problem. You can still jump on another webinar and keep watching my videos because I don't need to make money on every single person who watches my stuff, you know? So that's my mindset, you know? And it's actually quite interesting because the other day I had a conversation with my really good friend. And let's say that this guy is very famous in, in certain field in sport. I, I can't mention which because then people know, but he's very, he's like a celebrity in that field. And he's thinking about building content online. So we are actually driving and he told me, you know what, but I don't want to give away my things for free. There's so much value, you know, I'm charging so much money for my seminars. Why would I give it away for free on YouTube or on Udemy, you know, for 20, 30, $40? It doesn't make any sense. And I tried to explain to him, listen, man, you are actually creating value, not for other people, but for yourself as well. Because when you give away those things for free, people who will not buy your premium products are the ones who would never pay you anything anyway. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just the same as with, with torrents. When someone takes your course and posts it on torrents or some other site, uh, people who download it for free are the individuals who would never even pay for your products in the first place. You know what I mean? Yep. So many people get frustrated. Oh, you know, it's so bad because people are getting my videos for free. But to me, it doesn't matter because these are... These are the people who wouldn't pay anyway, right? But then also there are certain people who will watch your uh, videos or, or audios, whatever it is, and maybe initially they didn't plan to buy your stuff, but you gave them so much value that something starts clicking in their minds and they realize that, you know what? I really like this person. I want to learn more from them. Hmm. I'm not sure if I want to buy something, but I'm going to keep following them. Then maybe you send them to a different, you know, free course. Then they take it and the buying temperature goes higher and higher and higher. And maybe eventually six months from now, they'll end up buying your premium product. But I believe that it's all about giving people the flexibility. That's the first thing, giving them flexibility. So you have free stuff, low level stuff and high level stuff. And also the second thing, not being pushy, being very relaxed about how, how you offer your products. I honestly believe that people appreciate it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'm i just not the type of person that buys those premium products when people are being pushy. Maybe some people uh -huh. are. Maybe I'm sure people can, and they obviously do make a lot of money with those tactics. But 
at the end of the day, I think it's better to have that more relaxed attitude. And, and yeah. I think that's more authentic at the end of the day too, because there's no reason why you're going to limit access to your course for like the next two hours, other than just the fact exactly. that you're limiting, limiting it and you're trying to push people to buy it right then and there. So I feel like when I have, I've started to sell my own premium product through online course mm -hmm. masters. And I was kind of the same thing. I did a couple webinars and at the end of the webinar, it wasn't like this is, you're going to miss out right now. If you don't get this course <laughs> by the end of the Q and a session, I told people, you know, if you want to get it, I'll still give it to you. If you email me and you miss the deal right now, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. So, and that seems to be working for me. I don't know if it's a shift in the way people mm -hmm. are doing things right now, but I think it, it will be a shift and people will, the big name people will start to be a little bit more relaxed about mm -hmm. selling their products. Yeah, and it applies uh, to many different realms of life as well. For example, uh, communication between people as well, or, or pitching. When you talk to someone, and when you are really putting so much effort to make a good impression, the chances are you'll not make a good impression, right? Or even think about male to female dynamics. When you're too pushy, and you're really pushing for that day, hey, give me your number, let's go, let's meet. She won't give you her number and vice versa, you know, in business as well. When you go to the network, you, we all know those people. You go to the networking event and you're, you just want to have a good time. You just want to talk to a bunch of people and you don't have any expectations. You just want to enjoy your time. And there's this person who just talked to 57 people and you happen to be 58 and they come up to you and they talk to you. They kind of pitch you and within two minutes, you can sense that they spotted someone who is maybe richer than you and they kind of want to you know, finish the conversation like, yeah. hey, listen, pleasure talking to you, man. I feel like we're really connecting and I feel good vibes. Listen, this is my card. Write to me. I'm sure we can do something together. Boom. Like, I, come on. It, it never works for those people. And, and the reason they have to go to networking events is because it doesn't work for them. But when you just kind of roll through, through life and you're relaxed about it and, you know, you meet someone and you just talk to them and you're trying to give value and you don't really care so much about the outcome. That's when the best things happen. You know, it's funny, for example, famous people, right? When you meet a celebrity on a plane, if you want to really connect with that person, I mean, the last thing you want to do is to jump on them. Oh, hey, how are you doing? I'm a big fan. Can I have a picture? Hey, tell me about your... And the next thing you know, they're tired of you and they just want to escape, mm -hmm. you know? But, uh, but if you just say, hey, what's up? How's everything going? And just take it easy. And there is... There's no pressure and you're not asking thousands of questions. You are just going with the flow and you are just embracing good vibes. The chances are they haven't experienced it for such a long time that they will approach you and tell you, you know what? It was awesome talking to you. What's your number? Let's hang out. I'm going to be in the city for the next couple of days. And it's, it's amazing how those things happen, you know? Yeah. So sometimes it. it's about lowering those expectations, lowering lowering the outcome the, the ideal outcome you want to have and just enjoying the journey and that's what amazing things happen mm, and that's what you're all about i love it so i've loved this interview i think people will really love it hearing about your experience what's your final piece of advice for people who just want to get started who are maybe stuck at some part of the journey whether it's about branding or confidence or just getting started what what would you tell them to help them along mm -hmm. Sure, there are the many many things I want to say, but let me tell let me let me tell you one thing. Okay, don't wait for the inspiration, trigger the inspiration. All right. So what I mean by this, many people when they want to build something, whether it's a course or they want to write a book, and I've been guilty of that by the way, or they want to talk to someone or deliver a speech, or whatever it is, they overthink, and they are waiting for that perfect moment, right? When all the traffic lights of lights will be green at the same time and boom, you can go and you can you can deliver. But this is real life. I mean, shit happens. Sorry for saying that, but shit happens. You know, circumstances will never be ideal. So instead of just waiting for that perfect moment, just do the first smallest thing you can do to trigger the momentum. I honestly believe it's all about momentum. Right? So I'll give you a quick personal example. A few months ago, I was in Himalayas and I had that big aha moment. I was, you know, 
probably four and a half thousand meters above the sea level on my own, kind of trying to get to, to the next lodge before the snowstorm. The weather was really bad. And let's say I had a lot of time to think. So I'm walking and walking, and and I had this aha moment when I realized that there's something missing in my life. And that thing was public speaking, right? I've been making videos for many years now, and I love it. I love the impact you can make with videos. But I also realized that I'm missing that real connection with the audience. And then I also realized that one of the reasons why I wasn't embracing public speaking was that I still have those limiting beliefs in my mind, you know? And, and whenever I would think about potentially speaking on a big stage, I would get a little bit anxious. And that would piss me off because my internal dialogue would kick in and I would say to myself, why are you anxious? You've made like thousand videos. You've presented on stages before. Why the hell are you anxious? And then it would be very easy to rationalize. You know what? You don't need to present. You can just stick to video. That's what you know how to do. You can, you know, you can create results with videos. You don't need to present. But then I also realized that day in Himalayas that if I don't push through that, I would say fear, in a way it was fear, then I would always be stuck in this weird mindset of what if, what if, what if. So instead of just pondering about it for too, too long, I decided to take the first small step. And that step was calling people in Bangkok in one of the co-working spaces and organizing a workshop. And that's what I did. So literally, after coming back from Himalayas, I went to Bangkok, and the day after, I delivered a two-hour workshop. Was I stressed out? Yes, because I knew that when people see me online and they see me on a video, they have certain expectations, and they assume that I'm going to be that bulletproof presenter, but in reality, I haven't presented for a long time on a stage. So I was a little bit anxious, but I went there. I loved that speech. I really enjoyed it. People loved it, and that only pushed me to the next level. So what do you need to do when you have a little bit of momentum? You got to keep pushing it, right? As you know, when you have the merry-go-round for the kids, initially it's very tough to, to, to make it going. But once it's, it's going, it's very easy. You can use just one finger and it just keeps going, right? So I pushed myself. So I called up a bunch of people. I flew over to Bucharest and I did three speeches day after day. And then I flew to Barcelona and I did two workshops for Mind Value, 100 plus people, best-selling authors, public speakers, many top people there in the room. And I loved it. And now I'm at the stage where people, you know, write to me and they're like, hey, we are having this, this uh, uh, presentation going on. We are having this event. Would you like to come and present? But a few months ago, I still had self-doubts about public speaking. Now, why? Why did I manage to create that change in my life? Because instead of overthinking and instead of trying to read another book about speaking in public, I pulled the trigger. I just loaded that gun and I pulled the trigger and I took the first smallest step, which, which was delivering a workshop in Bangkok in front of 25 people. And the next thing you know, it's a part of my comfort zone. So if you are still struggling with something, you are thinking about building a course, but you're not sure how to do it and you don't know how to film the video set, you have limiting beliefs about how you look on the camera, forget about it. Start with one YouTube video. Don't create a course, create one YouTube video. But make sure that you pack it with so much value that people will find it irresistible. And I can guarantee you, you create that one YouTube video with a ton of value, people will give you their love. People will be like, oh wow, you're changing my life with this video, this is amazing. They will share it, they will comment on it, they will like it. That's, that's going to only give you even more confidence and motivation to post more content. And that's when you're going to trigger that, that, that positive momentum. But the worst thing you can do is to wait for a perfect moment. Don't do it. I've done it. I've done it for many years. And it's a, literally a waste of your life, you know? Jeremy used to say opportunities are like a cup of tea. They stay warm for a very little while. I mean, it sounds a bit cheesy. But when you think about it, it's so true, right? There are certain opportunities in the world. And if you don't embrace that opportunity, someone else will. If there is a great cause you want to create, mm. I mean, listen, you're watching this right now. If there is a cause you want to create, I can guarantee you that if you keep procrastinating and if you don't do it right now, someone else may do it in a week from now, maybe one month from now. Maybe right now, while you're thinking about it, someone is already shooting the videos. So... What's the part of waiting? Put yourself out there. Start with the first small step and everything else will seem easier. Great. 
So uh, I didn't mean to, I got into, uh, into my rant mode, but no, I'm, I'm was, very I mean, about it's it, all you know? it's all so good. Hey, I love it, and I think people are gonna <laughs> love it too. This is awesome. Uh, all all really good advice. Uh, so where can people find more information about you? Even if you you want to mention your your new program, where can people find out more information about that program that will build their confidence? Uh-huh. To be honest, I don't really want to pitch anything specific here. That's fine. <laughs> but if you want to find me, just Google my name, Jimmy Narain, uh, J-I-M-M-Y-N-A-R-A-I-M-E, a bit tricky. I'm probably going to put it there anyway. And uh, what I would recommend you to do is to join my Facebook group called Life Hacking with Jimmy Narain. Mm. That's one of the best places to find me because I get so many messages on Udemy, on YouTube, on my email. It gets overwhelming, especially for a full-time traveler. So I decided to put everything together into one group on Facebook that I check every single day, you know, doing Facebook live videos, answering questions, posting new content pretty much all the time, encouraging people to post content as well. So that's the best place to find me. Life hacking with Jimmy the Rain. Perfect. I love it. And I'll include all the links on the show notes at onlinecoursemasters.com. Awesome. Jimmy, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you on this interview. I can't wait to just chat again in the future and see how you do with everything. And I, I'm sure I'd love to have you on the podcast later on just to see how things are going. So thanks so much. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Once again, I'm really appreciated. I'm very grateful for this. You know, life is about those, those small moments. You know, before, to be honest, before the call, I had very low energy, many things going on, you know, a lot of traveling. I'm still kind of recovering. But right now, my state totally shifted. I was here before the call. Now I'm here. I'm going to go to this cafeteria now, probably write like 5,000 words of content. I'm so pumped up. So thank you for that, man. Great energy. Love it. Very happy to be here. And, uh, and once again, guys, stop overthinking. You just got to do it. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks so much, Jimmy. (laughs) Thanks. I hope you enjoyed that episode. As always, if you want to fast track your success, head over to onlinecoursemasters.com and sign up for your free trial of my flagship program, the Online Course Masters Masterclass. Yep, that's right. It's a masterclass designed to take you from zero to hero, creating and selling your very own online courses. If you haven't done so yet, please leave a review for this show wherever you listen. This is how we can help expand our audience and help teach the world. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next week in the next edition of the Online Course Masters Show.